Hey everyone, you're here sewing with Cody and Pete. Today we're not actually sewing, we're just going over like about 10 of the top issues that I hear over and over and over again with people and their machines. Some things just necessarily aren't issues, but are just things that come up, uh, especially with, with new Bernina customers or going from an older machine to our new modern machines. And I made a list which I'll also have uploaded on my blog and the link uh, will be in the description below. But I have a little list that I uh, wrote up so we can go over, I think I've got maybe about 10 different things, um, issues, concerns, or things that come up uh, with customers and their machines. So let's get started. The first thing, this I get a telephone call about all the time. And this is when customers, especially new customers, when they uh, turn on the machine, they hear this humming noise or this buzzing noise. And I've had customers who've had the machines for eight, 10 years and call me with this issue. What it is, I've got a video about this as well. Uh, maybe I'll have that in the link right above. But what it is, it's your bobbin winder. So some machines, especially the new 4 Series, when you engage your bobbin winder, it will just start spinning and your touchscreen does not display that you're winding a bobbin. So you hear this noise and you don't see anything happening because the little bobbin winder motor, it's spinning that little knob at the top of your machine and you don't see anything. Nothing really changes, but you hear this noise. And when you turn the machine off, the noise stops and you turn the machine back on, the noise starts up again. And all it is is you have your bobbin winder engaged. So on other machines like the 7 Series and the 5 Series, the new 5 Series, uh, when you engage that bobbin winder, a screen pops up with a little slide bar. And what that slide bar is, is it gives you the ability to change the speed of your bobbin winder. So typically with those machines, uh, when people see that, they no, when they turn on the machine, they hear this buzzy noise and they see their screen has changed. And usually that's an indicator, but not always. So if you ever turn on your machine, you hear a humming, buzzing noise, it's most likely your bobbin winder. So the next thing, this is a very common thing as well. Um, and so what can happen, it can be when you turn on your machine, um, it could be after you rethread your machine, you start to sew or try to sew. It, it could be a number of different things that can happen beforehand before you get this error message 1010. So typically what the error message 1010 is, is where your bobbin, your bobbin case is inside your hook system of your machine. If that mechanism can't turn or if it can't spin, it throws up an error message 1010. And basically it means the hook can't move. There's something blocking it. It could be you have your bobbin in wrong, your bobbin case in wrong, the hook is in wrong. You have a piece of thread or a piece of needle behind that metal uh, magnetic hook and things just can't spin, things just can't move. And that's why when you first turn on your machine, the, the machines make this weird noise and what it's doing, they're basically doing a systems check. So they're checking to make sure every little thing can move just enough to make sure everything's working properly. And the same exact thing happens when you first start sewing after you turn on your machine. Your needle will come down, it'll make all kinds of noise. It's just making all its adjustments, making sure everything's fine. And usually that's when you get that error 1010 message. When you first turn on your machine or when you first start to sew. And sometimes after you've changed your bobbin, uh, changed or cleaned out your machine, or rethread the machine, so something may not have been threaded properly and things just can't move, things get locked up and you get that error 1010 message. And that's what it is. So the, to resolve this issue, um, one, rethread the top thread, but also take off your stitch plate to make sure there's nothing caught around there. Uh, take out your bobbin and bobbin case, then release the little um, release mechanism on the side inside your bobbin case to let that little door come forward and you can take out that metal round magnetic hook. And so you can take that out. Typically, you'll see your issue behind there. Um, you'll see some thread, you may see a piece of needle, you'll see something. Once you take all that out, you'll know, you'll see that you'll find your issue. And once everything snaps back in together, I've got a video on how to do all that, of course, um, everything should be fine. You may have to turn off the machine and turn it back on, but usually after that, you're perfectly fine. Uh, and the first, another thing is, so when you get that error message, if you go on the side of your machine and turn that hand wheel or try to turn that hand wheel, you'll notice it's locked. It's, it won't turn. Um, now, 
if it turns smoothly, right after the error message comes up, and you try and turn the hand wheel and it turns, then it could be something else. Uh, we've had things that have slipped out of their low gears or whatnot in their mechanism. It's all tech stuff. Uh, but we've had stuff slip out, and so the motor tried to move it, and it just wasn't right, so it gave up that error message. In that case, if you do everything that I've said, and it still doesn't work, and it's still giving you that error message, then that's when it's time to go take it in for your, uh, to your Bernina technician and let him handle it. And this error 1010 message, it's only found on uh, the B9 hook bobbins. So that's the bobbins, that's the machine with those big jumbo bobbins, like your four seri your new four series, your new five series, your seven series um, machines. Those all have that error message because those all have the same hook system, which would give up that error message. Let's see. I didn't get that. Could you try? So the next thing is a noisy machine. We get this often when customers bring in their machine in for yearly maintenance or for repair. They'll make the comment that the machine is very noisy. Or sometimes they'll come to class and they say, you know, the machine's been selling fine, but it's making this really loud noise when I sew. My first question, because I already know the issue, is when was the last time you oiled your machine? They pause for a minute and they can't give me an answer because it's been too long. If your machine is making a loud noise while you're sewing, and only while you're sewing, it desperately needs oil. So these machines, and again, I'm dealing, I'm talking about the big jumbo bobbin machines. Uh, actually, any machine, any burning at this point, really. Uh, if your machine's making a loud noise, it means it needs oil. So when we are dealing with the big jumbo bobbin machines, um, you, a lot of it depends on the threads you're working with. Uh, but it needs it needs to be oiled at least after every bobbin or every other bobbin. Cause those are big bobbins, and if you have it full of thread and you've run out, you've used all that thread, you need to take it out, clean it. Especially if you're dealing with a cotton thread, a very linty cotton thread like Orafil, for instance, you're gonna want to clean out that machine uh, because it gets linty. It gets linty fast. Um, a well-oiled machine is a happy machine. Just like your car, you make sure you go to, you should make sure you go for oil changes in your car um, routinely for the same reason. We have a lot of metal components and we need to keep them lubricated. Let's see. Uh, this is a common, com well, it's not super common, but this we, I've seen uh, on many occasions and that is skip stitches. Uh, so if you're sewing and you're, you're just say it's doing a straight stitch or a satin stitch, like an embroidery, and um, you have skipped stitches. So basically, you would have the machines creating stitches, but every so often, instead of a stitch length being tiny like all the rest, you would have one that's longer. And basically what happens when that needle came down into your fabric, it did not catch that bobbin thread the first time, but the second time it caught it and so on and so forth. And then, every, and then again, it missed that skip stitch and then it picked it up after that. But you start to see these skip stitches. Um, it could be a number of things. The first thing, uh, it's, well, to be honest, it's most likely your needle. Uh, it most likely means you have a doll needle, you have a needle with a burr on it, you have a bent needle, or you have a needle that's too small for the thread and fabric. Um, it's rare that I would say it's too big. Um, if a needle's too big, it's just going to start destroying your fabric, if anything. Uh, but it's not going to skip a stitch. Um, but a needle that's too small um, and a needle that's bent, has a burr, or is something old, basically. Um, your needle should be changed after about six to eight hours of sewing. Um, and again, depends on what you're sewing on. If you're using a smaller needle on thicker fabric or more coarse fabric, it can dull the needle quicker. And of course, if you're using a titanium or a chrome needle, they'll last a little bit longer than a regular needle. Um, but back to skip stitches. So it could definitely be your needle. Usually it is. Um, the next thing is, when was the last time you oiled your machine? Because not every machine, especially uh, ones that don't have the big bobbin, uh, like it just has a regular metal CB or a class L bobbin, um, they don't seem to need oil quite as much. Uh, and you won't notice that noise. It won't, well, basically it won't get as loud as quickly as some of the newer machines when it needs oil. Um, so if it's skipping stitches, that definitely could be an indicator that it needs oil. 
but typically it's going to be your needle if you're dealing with skip stitches and it could be the size is not adequate for your thread and your fabric or it could just need to be changed it could be just old and dull the next thing on the list is shredding the thread and breaking the thread so if you're sewing along and your um your machine starts to shred the thread basically your th most threads are composed of multiple strands of smaller threads and they're wrapped together so as you're sewing sometimes you could have those couple of strands start to pull off away from like the main strand and you have all this bunching up of thread that's a form of shredding the thread there's multiple forms but that's one um so if you're sewing and your machine is shredding the thread typically that means uh, first of all, it could just happen. It could just be a little nick that was in the thread and the eyelid of your needle caught it. Um, and you just didn't notice it right away, especially in embroidery. Um, so it could be something as simple as that. So you just need to re-thread, well, cut all that uh, shredded part of the thread off and then just re-thread the machine and go. That would be the first thing that I would do. Um, the next thing, if it happens again, then clearly it most likely wasn't the thread. The next thing it could be, and it's mostly always at this point, your needle. So it could be you have a burr on your needle and a burr is basically a little nick or a little imperfection that forms. Uh, it could be a brand new needle or usually one that's been in your machine a while. Little imperfections on your needle uh, that your thread catches and it basically nicks the thread and starts to form, uh, cause it to shred. Um, that's a burr. And so if these burrs form on your needle, it can start to shred your thread. And so in that case, put a new needle on, especially if you have been sewing for a while. However, everybody who, um, who's who been dealing with machines and sewing for a while, for a long time, and especially people who do it professionally, they'll tell you, you can take a brand new needle, put it in your machine and something could be wrong with it. So just because you uh, just put a new needle on recently, doesn't mean that needle isn't bad already. However, what I would do is I will change the needle but set that re slightly used or your um, new need, your previously new needle to the side. Don't toss it just yet because it may not be the needle. It could be perfectly fine. It could be something else. Um, but if it starts shredding again with that second new needle, then um, if it starts to shred again, then clearly it wasn't either needle. It could be something else, uh, but still could be related to the needle. But in that case, you can uh, save both of those needles. But so next thing, it could easily be the needle size you're using is not adequate to your thread size. So the needles that we use um, need to be, need to correlate to the fabric that we're using, also to the weight thread that we're working with. So you don't wanna use a size 70 needle and work with a 12 weight thread or a 30 weight thread. Those just don't work. The thread's too big for the eyelid of the needle. So that's something you need to pay attention to. And that's a whole nother video. But if it starts to, sh if your thread is shredding, it could be that um, your needle size is too small. And that's what's nice about the top stitch needles, which I've got a video dealing with top stitch needles uh, and Microtex needles. Those are my two favorite needles because the top stitch have a nice long eyelid on them. So it really helps prevent any thread uh, breaking or shredding. Now, if you're dealing with metallic thread, that's a whole nother ball game. Um, so when you work with metallic thread, it's they're prone to break, they're prone to shred. That's why they make metallic needles. Um, but also you can use a top stitch needle that has a nice big long eye lift. Um, that will help allow that thread to flow through it and help prevent it from shredding or breaking. That and the uh, thread lubricating system, which I've got videos on those as well. Something else. So if you're having problems with the machine th uh, shredding your thread or breaking it, take a look at the thread you're, you're, that you're using. You could be using the right weight thread for the fabric, the right size needle for the thread, all the above. However, you're using cheap thread. Um, not all threads created equal by any stretch of the imagination. There are a number of brands out there that are just, they're just cheap. And they really, if, if you are sewing on a Bernina, you shouldn't be using cheap thread. You bought a Bernina 
for its reliability and its beautiful stitch quality and its strength and everything else. But its beautiful stitch quality is what Bernina has been known for for over a hundred years. So you don't want to use cheap thread on your machine. There are many other reasons, but if you want your stitches to look good, don't use Coates and Clark. There are a number of other thread brands out there that no one's ever heard of, especially a lot of thread that's on Amazon. Um, it may be really cheap and may be a bargain, but it's not good. So if you're using this thread and it's breaking on you, take a look at your thread. Do a little research on it. Go to your local store and see what they think of the thread that you're working with. And most of them will tell you right off the bat, I've never heard of it or that's garbage or so that definitely can, because we see it all the time. People come in with Coats and Clark thread and their Bernina and their stitches just don't look good. Their tension's off. Um, it's shredding. It's just, it feels rough. And the answer's right there in front of them. It's the thread. So that's something to pay attention to as well. You may have everything right, but you just may be using cheap thread for your thread breakage and shredding and stitch quality and everything. So the next big thing of issue or question, all of the above, that I see with the Bernina machines is the needle threader. I'm not gonna go into much detail about this because I have a whole video on using the needle threader and I'll have that in the link uh, above because everybody has, has trouble learning how to use the needle threader and I've got a great video um, on using the, the needle threader. I've got two of them actually. Um, and basically I go over the three mistakes that people make in the three steps, uh, when uh, using the needle threader. So check out that needle threader video. So the next thing is nesting in the bobbin, uh, when sewing, uh, we're nesting underneath our fabric. So typically this happens in the very beginning. This is actually a extremely easy fix. It's not usually, it's not anything the machine's doing wrong. It's usually the person sewing. Um, so, so what it is, is so if you have a nesting underneath the, thre underneath the machine, now if it's a huge nest with jams up the machine, usually what happens is something wasn't threaded correctly and usually it's our uh, upper thread. So if you have that happen, we see a lot in embroidery because we're always changing our threads. So when that happens, re-thread the machine especially if it's something that actually jams up the machine. Rethread, and my rule of thumb, granted I don't always follow it myself, Mark, but my rule of thumb is whenever you have a jam, make sure you rethread the top and the bobbin. Because so many times people assume, including myself, people assume that you've got all this nest underneath the uh, fabric or underneath your hoop, and you've, you think it's the bobbin. In all actuality, it had nothing to do with the bobbin it was the top thread. Uh, usually it wasn't threaded or it came unthreaded from the uptake lever, which is one of the, uh, like the second or third step that we thread. Usually that came unthreaded or wasn't threaded properly and it just didn't stay where it needed to stay. And usually uh, an issue like that happens within the first two stitches, two or three stitches, the machine will jam up. Nine times out of 10, it's always the top thread. So whenever you have a major thread jam, rethread the top and the bobbin. But I'm just talking about when we're starting to sew, you don't really hear anything typically, nothing ever really happens usually. Uh, but once we're finished and we cut, cut our thread, we look underneath and the first half inch of stitches, you have all this thread just kind of caught up. What that is typically is your top thread. So what happens when we thread the machine and everything and we start sewing, we've got this top little tail and didn't really notice when we started to sew, it just disappeared. What happened was, is that tail got drugged to the bottom of our uh, fabric, on the back of our fabric. And as we started sewing, that little tail just kind of got knotted up and folded up and just got stitched over. So it's an easy, easy, easy fix. So when we start sewing, I always like to hold my tail, usually just with my left hand as I'm starting. So my little tail's off to the side and I'm just holding it along with my fabric and I start stitching. And it, what, that little bit of pressure that you're laying while laying your hands on that thread tail while you start to sew, it doesn't allow that tail to get pulled up underneath. So once you're finished and you use your thread cutter or you cut your thread, you'll notice the back of your fabric looks nice and clean. 
And that's all, and all you have to do is just make sure you apply a little bit of pressure to that tail that we have off to the side, hold it, and then start sewing. And this is also why, especially if we're a, a quilter and we're piecing, why well, we'll chain stitch. So we'll basically take a piece of fabric, start it, start sewing, and then we'll keep sewing the um, pieces together. And we'll have this long chain of pieces that are all linked, and we'll go back and cut them all and separate them. One of the reasons we do that is to prevent having that tail and having the thread um, be, get pulled to the back. There's many other reasons why we chain stitch. One for speed, so we can get things done a lot quicker. We don't always have to keep raising our foot up. And also it helps to pull those pieces, but that's another reason why we chain pieces to help prevent that thread from getting pulled up underneath. But that's a common question that I get, especially we see it in class when people are actually sewing. Why is my thread bunching up in the beginning when I start to sew? And it's because that top thread tail is getting pulled back to the bottom. So the next one, which is number eight on our list, um, this one's not a very common one, uh, but it, I see it all the time. And that is, when you start to sew, the machine, and this isn't every machine, uh, but like our seven series, our five, and I think our, our, our new four series do it as well. Uh, when we start to stitch, it will actually make a securing stitch every time we start stitching a new piece. And if we're piecing, we don't want that. Or if we're one of those uh, sewers, well, usually when you're piecing, you start right off the edge of our fabric and then we sew onto it. So, but what the machine's designed to do by default, and this is something I typically turn off when new machines come in and I sew them out before they're allowed to be sold, is I turn this function off because most people don't want it, uh, is the machines will make a securing stitch. So it'll stitch in place about four or five times and then it'll start to sew. So what the machine is doing is it's locking in those stitches to help prevent them from coming apart. So in this case, we can turn this function off. So if we're doing garment sewing or doing crafts, something like that, which is excellent, uh, this works out great. Um, but if we're piecing, and there are a number of other occasions where we're kind of starting right off the edge of our fabric and coming doing a straight stitch forward, we don't want to secure in midair because typically what can happen is it will jam up because now we're stitching and there's no fabric creating those stitches and you just have the needle going down with thread. It's usually a mess. Um, and sometimes we just want to just start sewing. So I have a separate little insert showing uh, how to turn this function off. And actually, I think I've got a video on this already. But so turning off the uh, securing function um, when we start sewing is something that most of us much prefer. So the next one is thread jams after a stitch or two. This one actually went over in one of the other ones. Um, so a thread jam after a stitch or two. This usually almost always means the machine wasn't threaded correctly. It may have looked threaded correctly, but it just wasn't. Uh, we see this on the 7 Series a lot, um, especially in embroidery, where we thread a machine and we start sewing, start embroidering, and it'll take a stitch or two and then kind of jam up. Basically, that little uptake lever wasn't threaded. This is a very common uh, thing, usually for embroidery. So to resolve this, one is to rethread the entire machine. Uh, but what I do whenever I'm threading any machine, it, it doesn't matter what the brand, what level of machine, Bernina, whatever, when I thread, I always hold tension at the top. So the, the thread's coming off of the spool pin, multiple holder, whatever, and I'm holding it. So when I'm threading the machine, I'm holding tension. So that's forcing the thread to go in every little nook and cranny, every little spot that it's supposed to, and snap where it needs to. Because uh, a lot of times we can't see it where it's going, but by holding that tension, you're forcing the thread to go where it needs to go. So that's my biggest tip. Um, and that's definitely helped a lot of people, even like on the Bernina long arm, the RQ series, um, any machine that makes a huge difference. Hold that tension while you're threading the machine. Um, and usually you'll prevent a lot of thread jams um, from that. And usually, like I said, the thread jams in the beginning uh, usually indicated that we didn't have a machine thread correctly. Or there have been some cases where we forgot to put the bobbin back in. And then we'll have a thread jam too, because there's nothing down there. So the last thing on my list um, is a extremely common one. And this really doesn't have too much to do with the, the customer or the sewer. It's usually the machine. Uh, just like anything or any working machinery, 
we have to maintain it. Um, and there's some things that we just can't do. So, but the last thing on my list is the thread cutter jamming or the thread cutter not perfectly cutting my thread or the machine jamming every time I try and use the thread cutter or after I use the thread cutter. Now this mainly applies or more commonly these days applies to our four, five and seven series machines. So those machines are designed very, very, very similarly. Um, they're just different sizes. So that's why we kind of lump those machines together. So there's multiple things you can do if your thread cutter is jamming. Um, the first thing is to clean the thread catcher. And I've got a video on that too, and I'll try and link that up here. So the little thread catcher is the mechanism that comes out, grabs the thread and pulls it back and cuts it. So we can go in our settings and have it present because usually when you press the thread cutter, you don't see, ever see it happen because you have your stitch plate on. But that thread catch will come out, grab the thread, and go back in. So we can go in our settings to clean it and to make sure we don't have any debris caught in there. So the thread catch will come out and stay out so we can clean it. And then we can hit the, the, the link and then it'll pull it back in. So first, clean your thread catcher. Uh, most of our new machines will prompt you to th clean your thread catcher after every 1,000 thread cuts. Another thing that I found, this is something I found over the years, is a lot, sometimes it depends on what bobbin thread you're using. Some of our more silkier bobbin threads, like uh, Libby Lehman bob, bobbin line, um, these machines don't like it very much. It's not so much the machine that doesn't like it, it's the thread cutter that doesn't like it, um, which is why we use Deco Bob by Wonderfill. Because a lot of those threads were so silky, I find that when, the, when you tell it to cut the thread, it the thread kind of just slides through the thread cutter and it doesn't evenly cut it and it jams. So that's why we've gotten away from a number of different bobbin threads, especially the ones that are really silky uh, because it just slips and slides through the uh, thread cutter on most of these machines and it causes issues. And this, so yes, with the thread catcher sometimes or the thread cutter, um, sometimes it's just the bobbin thread that you're using that that machine just doesn't like. Um, but with the thread cutter, one thing that we find, because it is such a tiny little blade with continual use, and especially depends on the type of thread you're working with, it just goes dull. Um, I see that the thread cutter usually has about a 12 to 24 month lifespan, um, unless really baby, uh, I wouldn't say baby, but basically if very well taken care of um, and not abused, um, the thread cut. cut thread cutter can last even longer, but it's very common for a machine that's about, or a thread cutter that's about 18 months old that it may need to be replaced. It's a very inexpensive part and it's something that our tech typically changes on customers' yearly service. And what can cause a thread cutter to go bad? Can be, there are a number of different things. Um, sometimes it could be the needle hits it, uh, or a lot of it really what happens is thread, you get thread jams, the machine may have not been threaded correctly anymore, or wasn't threaded correctly at first, um, and thread gets caught around it because the techs have seen the thread cutters that have little cuts in them or little uh, breakages in them, and typically that happens when you have a thread jam, you kind of uh, force it out. If you ever have a thread jam, be very gentle with it. Make sure you take the bobbin and bobbin case out in your hook and take all that out first before you try and start pulling any threads because you could have thread wrapped around that thread cutter. Um, but yeah, that's it. So that's uh, kind of like the top 10 issues that we see the most. Uh, like I said, I've got a number of different videos going over some of these things directly. Um, and I'll try and put those links in at the different spots in the video. Um, and again, I'll have all, like I said, I'll have all this typed up and it'll be on my blog, um, which I'll have the link in, in the description of this video. And stay tuned for more Bernina stuff, for more sewing stuff. Um, yeah. So, as always, happy sewing.